until now we have seen as to how to solve uh, one dimensional steady state analysis problems in 1d we have looked at problems in one dimension uh, sorry problems with one primary variable where we are dealing with second order differential equation we have seen problems with two primary variables again a single differential equation but of fourth order and finally we have seen a problem where there are two governing equations and two primary variables now all of these problems belong to the category of steady state analysis so you have a governing differential equation which needs to be satisfied in the domain and boundary conditions which need to be satisfied on the boundary next what we are going to do is we are going to look at dynamic dynamic analysis problems okay so uh, dynamics analysis uh, once again we are going to start with uh, 1d now whenever we talk about dynamics broadly speaking there are two kinds of problems that we deal with one is called eigen value analysis problems and second one is the purely time dependent problems in eigen value analysis in eigen value analysis we have two types of problems that we look at one is natural vibrations of structures and second thing is buckling of structures okay now the natural vibrations whenever you are looking at any machine whether it is a fan a turbine a lathe machine or uh, a air compressor take any machine um, you are always uh, worried about the vibrations of the machine now uh, of other matter automobile so why is it uh, what is it exactly that you are worried about as far as vibrations is concerned anyone can you please tell me what is it that you are worried about as far as vibrations is concerned uh okay so you are worried about uh, resonance within the system what will resonance do why is it bad it will increase the amplitude of the excitation not excitation it will increase the amplitude of vibration will the amplitude of vibration really increase to infinity under which case will it increase to infinity there is no damping within the system but all real life prob all real life materials all real life problems have damping what is damping damping is essentially some mechanism either within the material or on the outside where energy is dissipated within the system if you have some finite damping then your amplitude will increase at resonance frequency but it will not tend to infinity it will be a much larger value than what you would have in a static situation or away from away from um, resonant frequency now why are large amplitudes bad large amplitudes of vibration why are they bad take a example of a fan blade huh structure will not be weak really means it is not degrading the material what is it doing it will lead to large stresses within your elements as your amplitude of vibration increases the strains and corresponding stresses within the elements increase and at some point it can lead to either permanent yielding or fracture of the material depending on whether you are dealing with a brittle material or a ductile material okay 
so that is one problem any other issue so let us say it will not break but then what other issue can be there what other is noise okay noise is a major major concern whenever we are dealing with machines so these are two main problems as you come close to the resonance frequency your amplitude of vibration increases amplitude velocity acceleration pretty much everything increases and that can result in either permanent shape change or failure of the component and also as you come close to the resonance frequency you, the noise level in the machine goes up considerably okay and for controlling noise as well as uh, amplitude of vibration what we would require would be you need to have damping and you need to reduce the forcing uh, whatever is uh, causing the excitations and vibrations within the system so all right so we are really interested in uh, vibrations any machine uh, that you take okay any structure that you create you are always interested in the natural frequencies and the corresponding mode shapes sh modes of uh, yeah and the corresponding mode shapes for the structure now buckling where is buckling relevant for what kind of loadings for what kind of structures would you be concerned about buckling what kind of loadings compressive loads compressive loads okay so whether you are dealing with columns or you are dealing with shells or sheet material then there is a real concern of the structures undergoing buckling whenever they are subjected to compressive loads okay so when you have structures these are two things that you are always worried about as to what are its modes of vibration what are its natural frequencies and whether the excitation frequency will ever come close to the mm, natural frequency of the structure and uh, also in terms of and also what is the uh, buckling load uh, at which the structure is going to buckle okay so we are going to look at uh, these two problems to begin with and then we will look at a purely time dependent analysis problem okay first let us look at the natural vibrations of beams so uh, just for concreteness we will consider a euler bernoulli beam you can do the similar kind of analysis with timoshenko beams okay now uh, so i'm not going to derive the equations but uh, it can be shown that for euler bernoulli beams the governing differential equation okay is given by this so this over here is the this over here is the governing differential equation governing differential equation for the for the um, euler bernoulli beam now over here we are not con considering the foundation stiffness that is taken to be zero now uh, in any problem this particular beam would be subjected to some particular boundary conditions and initial condition now solution to a problem like this has two parts a particular solution and a homogeneous solution so particular solution we are denoting it with wp and homogeneous solution we are denoting it with w subscript h now what do these two things do so the particular solution it takes care of the non homogeneous boundary conditions and also it takes care of this distributed load which you are applying within the problem okay so uh, yeah so depending on how your distributed load is changing with time the particular solution will deal with the distributed load that you are applying 
Now, what does homogeneous solution do? The homogeneous solution, it satisfies the homogeneous boundary conditions. Okay. So, it satisfies the homogeneous form of the boundary conditions and it also satisfies the homogeneous form of the differential equation. Okay. This is very, very important that the homogeneous part of the solution deals with the homogeneous part of differential equation and the homogeneous form of boundary conditions. Okay. Now, uh, now, when analyzing the natural vibrations of a system, so when we say natural vibrations, we are referring to the vibrations within the structure in the absence of external loading. So, if there is no external loading, then what is causing it to vibrate? If there is no external load, what is causing it to vibrate? Sorry? Uh -huh. It is the initial condition. See, weight of the body is the non-homogeneous boundary condition. Okay? It will lead to some static deflection, but as such it does not cause any uh, vibration. What causes vibrations is something is causing a change in the equilibrium state of the structure. Okay? So, for example, if you have a scale, then how can we initiate vibrations within a scale? So, let us say I have cantilever boundary condition. So, one end is fixed. How do I initiate the vibrations within this scale? So, one option is so I can pull it at one end and release it, it will vibrate. Any other way? What is the standard way? What is the standard way of initiating vibrations in structures? You can give a impulse load. Now, physically speaking, so let us say I have some structure, okay how do I initiate a impulse load? What is impulse load by the way? Impulse load means that uh, at some time you are applying a particular force for a very short period of time and then after that again it goes back to zero. Okay? How can you apply an impulse load on a structure? Ha. So, one of the options is you basically initiate a collision. Okay? So, now, so, let us say you have a steel ball, you are dropping it from some height. Okay? It is going to bounce on the structure and go away somewhere. So, when it is bouncing, the, con the time for which it will be in contact with the structure will be very small. Okay? So, that is an impulse load. Another way is, uh, so, uh, yeah, another way is uh, for example, you have a impulse hammer okay, with a pointed edge. You take the hammer and you hit it on the structure and again you means you hit and remove. Okay, You do not sort of hold on to the structure. So, whenever, um, so either you can give a certain initial displacement and then leave it after that so that it is free to vibrate in whichever manner it deems fit or you can subject it to an impulse load. These are the two uh, typical ways in which structures are excited so that they experience natural vibrations. So, currently what we are looking at is natural vibrations where the external loading is zero. So, neither is a uniform load being applied. So, Q is zero and at the same time nor is any concentrated load being applied. Okay? So, for that matter, even capital Q is 0. Okay? So, uh, capital Q is 0 and uh, capital Q is 0 and also whatever essential boundary conditions we will apply. Okay? So, whatever essential boundary conditions we will apply. So, let us say you are doing cantilever beam. Okay? So, in cantilever beam, what do you have? Deflection and slope at the left end is 0. Okay? So, in the 
case of natural vibrations external loads are zero distributed and concentrated loads are zero and even the essential boundary conditions which you pick will also be zero okay so all right so for this case what we do is that uh, we write the solution to the problem okay we write the solution to the problem as a multiplicative decomposition of amplitude of vibration okay so when we are looking at uh, static vibra means when we are looking at structural vibrations we treat them as standing waves meaning uh, at every point is simply vibrating about its mean position okay and uh, so we treat the solution as a multiplicative decomposition of amplitude of vibration at the point okay so uh, are we assuming the amplitude of vibration to be uniform across the beam or is it varying from point to point it is varying from point to point okay and the amplitude of vibration is w of x this is the amplitude of vibration so the vib means uh, solution is written as amplitude of vibration multiplied by e to the power minus i omega t okay so what is e to the power minus i omega t this is nothing but cos omega t minus i minus i sin omega t okay so you are assuming a harmonic function at every point it is vibrating in a sinusoidal manner with angular frequency omega and amplitude capital w so if we put this form of the solution into the governing differential equation for the homogeneous part of solution then what do we get the differential equation becomes this okay so this becomes the differential equation so in the differential equation now you will have two terms the one in the square bracket multiplied by e to the power minus i omega t and this has to be equal to 0 now is e to the power i omega t 0 it is not 0 at all times okay in, in fact it is non zero mm, it's non zero at all times maybe it accepted some discrete times so what can you say about the square brackets then so since e to the power i omega t is not zero the term within the square bracket must be zero for all points within the domain okay so what do you have you will finally get d square by dx square of ei times d square w by dx square minus omega square which we may define as lambda multiplied by rho a w minus rho i d square w by dx square equal to zero now this kind of a differential equation where lambda is not spe specified but rather to be computed what is this kind of a differential equation called so uh, whenever you are dealing with a uh, differential equation of the form some differential operator d1 acting on let us say w equals to lambda times some differential or differential algebraic equation okay d2 of w what is this called what is this kind of an equation called this is called a eigenvalue problem or an eigenvalue differential equation okay so now our objective is to find capital w and lambda such that this will be equal to zero now what is the trivial solution to the problem see external loads are zero essential boundary conditions are zero differential equation is homogeneous so what is the trivial solution to the problem not infinite but fine w equal to 0 is a trivial solution to the problem okay now what we are trying to do is to find non trivial solutions to the problem meaning find w of x and lambda both of which are non zero such that this differential equation is satisfied and also the boundary conditions are 
satisfied okay so now so for this problem once again you can take the weak form and over the element domain you can show the weak form to be of this particular form okay of this particular form where k e i j is this so we have already derived this part but now you have m e i j which is given by this particular expression okay which is given by this particular expression so so uh, you can go ahead and uh, evaluate it you already know where phi is the interpolation function what kind of interpolation functions do you get for euler bernoulli beams what kind of interpolation functions do you get for euler bernoulli beams you get cubic polynomials when you are considering two nodes per element okay what are the primary variables for euler bernoulli beams okay deflection and slope so w and minus dw by dx so this delta vector what are we calling this delta vector delta e what are we calling it what name do we give it it's called the uh -huh, it's called the generalized displacements okay so all right so in this problem for two noded element you can show assuming constant e constant i constant rho constant a within the element you can show that ke and me matrices are given by this okay this is an exercise you can do it you can vary the code in mathematica a little bit you already have a code for determining keij okay so in that code you can evaluate meij by evaluating this integral it's a very straightforward thing to do you can do that in order to get your matrices okay now once you get your matrices then we have to solve the problem in matlab so i'm going to show you that 